The Midwest and South regions of your brackets are hitting the hardwood on Friday. The Midwest region tips off with the top seed at Illini taking on 16 Drexel at 1.15 p.m. Eastern time. Illinois returning to the big dance for the first time in eight years after claiming their first Big Ten tournament title since 2005. And one of the good stories of the tournament, Sister Jean will be in attendance cheering on Loyola Chicago as they open up versus Georgia Tech. That's at 4 p.m. Eastern. The region ends the day with number three, West Virginia, facing 14 Moorhead State. Mountaineers making their fifth tournament appearance in the past six years. Eagles into their first NCAA tournament since 2011. Let's get to some of the best picks from this part of the bracket. And for that, we once again welcome in our Chip Patterson and Sportsline's Larry Hartstein. Looking at these opening games here, gents, we have some big numbers amongst the favorites. Illinois favored by over 20. Houston in that same range. It gets a bit tighter as in inside 10 points for the likes of Oklahoma State and Tennessee. So give me your top favorite to cover in the opener, Chip. I'm going to go with Loyola, and this is not just a reaction to Moses Wright, the ACC Player of the Year, getting scratched from the lineup. A bit of news that has led to this line dancing out in the Ramblers' favor. I'm still not looking back. I'm not going to try to talk myself on buying into this Georgia Tech team that just went on a really great run in the ACC tournament. Loyola was incredibly underseeded, and that is unfair not only to Georgia Tech, but also to Illinois should they meet in the second round. This is a team that ranks top 10 in the country in terms of efficiency margin, number one in terms of defensive efficiency, and Cameron Crutwig and the rest of this Rambler squad, I mean, they're more than just Sister Jean. They're more than just the 2018 uh, memorable Final Four run. Uh, they are a great basketball team, and so I think that they're going to be able to win this one handily. Georgia Tech missing a lot inside with Moses Wright, and while Jose Alvarado gave us one of the great moments of Conference Championship Week with his emotional outburst after the win, and Josh Pastner is a very very good, you know, X's and O's defensive coach with the way that he schemes Georgia Tech up. I just don't think that they're going to be able to hang against, again, a top 10 team in terms of efficiency margin. So I'll lay those points with the Ramblers. Yeah, I'm going to take an even smaller favorite, and that's Rutgers over Clemson. You know, Clemson 11-1 and one at home, but only 5-6 and six on the road or neutral. And now they get a Rutgers team, played the eighth toughest schedule in the country, beat Illinois, beat Purdue, and a very good defensive team. Miles Johnson, I think, is going to make it tough on Amir Sims. Uh, I just think both teams are elite defensively. Rutgers just has a few more weapons. Give me the Scarlet Knights. If you're not into laying the points, there's always the straight up winners with money line picks. Larry, give me a money line underdog that you're going to lay out on in the Midwest opening round. This might be a shocker, but uh, the way the line is moving, it, it's not surprising at all. Liberty has come down from a nine point dog to a seven and a half point dog from a plus 350 to plus 280. They get Cade Cunningham in Oklahoma State and just a terrible draw for the Cowboys who love to score in transition. Liberty with Richie McKay, the, the pack line D, is not going to let him run. Liberty has five guys shooting over 40% from three-point range. They've won 12 in a row. I'm not saying they're going to win, but they're, it's worth a shot on the money line at this big price. I love that pick, Larry. Liberty is, uh, I agree, a very tough draw and a dog to look at, even if you don't take the money line, just to be able to make that tight against Oklahoma State. So I'm taking this to Syracuse, and I've tried to remain consistent across my CBSSports.com expert bracket. Go check it out. Fill out your bracket, enter bracket games. But I really think that, you know, in a region where I've got a lot of favorites winning, I think that Syracuse is definitely worth entertaining because this is a coin flip game for me against San Diego State. San Diego State has been the more consistent team. San Diego State is a much better defensive team. Yes, that 2-3 zone has actually been way off pace this year, ranking outside the top 50 in terms of defensive efficiency. But Syracuse does uh, have a little bit of spunk. They've been able to uh, showcase in wins against North Carolina and others the ability to heat it up. Uh, Buddy Bayheim can go for 25 or more and you're just basically investing in Jim Beheim, someone who's been on the bubble year after year after year then how often do we see them get into the NCAA tournament and find their way to the Sweet 16. I don't think the Syracuse team makes it to the Sweet 16 but I do think in this entire region it is a great underdog to maybe go and sprinkle. Yeah, some very interesting picks gentlemen Syracuse and Liberty. Okay picking winners is fun but you want to find good value as well that's why we're here and that may not be in a winner with that in mind what's your best wager for the Midwest region in the opening round of games here chip I'm going to go with the Tennessee Oregon State under and that has to do yes with some defensive prowess but it also has to do with a lack 
of scorers. Now, Tennessee freshman Jaden Springer has been able to give the Vols a little bit more uh, on the offensive end than they had in the middle of the season. He's done a good job of developing throughout the year, but I still think this is a team that is just really woeful offensively. And Oregon State, uh, while they had an awesome run in the Pac-12 Conference Tournament, again, another team that really doesn't scare me. You think about the teams that they beat right there on the way to the end in the semifinals against Oregon, you know, not a team that really fills up the box score and then in the championship game against Colorado again defensive minded team so I get these two teams that are defensive leaning already and a lack of really proven scores on both sides and so I, I like that underplay I love Liberty at plus nine I still like them a lot at plus seven and a half Oklahoma State you know coming off a grueling big 12 schedule and tournament and Liberty is going to I think shock the nation and this game will be competitive late into the second half take Liberty plus the points all right so Larry's got uh, Liberty as an underdog on the money line and your best wager for the first round mm, Larry nicely done lastly when you look at your bracket you're always looking at pathways I mean at least I am it's interesting to me in the Midwest Illinois could have a nice pathway to the Elite Eight maybe the Final Four Houston West Virginia may be facing a showdown what's the best wager in terms of picking a team to win the Midwest, Larry? You know, I wanted to make a case for a dog. I really did. But you look at Illinois and Ayo DeSumo goes five for 17 with five turnovers and they still win the Big Ten final over Ohio State. That tells you something. He, he missed three games. They won them all. I mean, they've got it all. They've got the big man. They've got the three-point shooters. They've got Io. I just don't see anyone getting in their way. Ohio State as a number two um Actually, I, I may have the regions, but I think I mixed up the regions, but I don't see anyone taking Illinois off of that uh, final four berth. Yeah, I agree with you, Larry. Illinois is going to be my pick uh, because, listen, they're the, one of the hottest teams in the country. I think that they're going to make it all the way to the national championship game. But from a value perspective, I want to at least make the case here for Houston because I think Illinois now really got jobbed by the committee with the way that this broke down. Mentioned earlier that you've got that Loyola game potentially lying in the second round. Then who do you have in the Sweet 16? You could have Oklahoma State unless, you know, Liberty takes them out. But, you know, Oklahoma State and Loyola is a much tougher path, in my opinion, than what Houston gets on the bottom half of the bracket. I am not as impressed with West Virginia. I'm not as excited about either one of the seven or the ten as the potential to take down the Cougs. And so basically the path to get to the Elite Eight is easier for Houston than it is for Illinois. Now we're talking about winning the region. Illinois and Houston play in the Elite Eight. And that's going to be fighting a lion eye all day. But if you want to sprinkle a, a couple different options and give yourself maybe a hedge or two, I, I think Illinois ends up winning the Midwest and making it to the Final Four. But I would not be surprised if Illinois gets bounced along the way. All of a sudden, things are going to be wide open for the Cougars. Chip, hedging the bets just in case. Taking Illinois, but just in case they don't. Maybe, maybe hedge your bet with something else. All right, let's recap those picks then. Top favorite to cover in the first round. Chip says go with Loyola Chicago at the five and a half. Uh, Larry likes Rutgers at a one and a hook there. Top money line underdog takes Syracuse, says Chip. Liberty. Larry likes Liberty. He likes Liberty. He likes him as the best wager for the first round, too, at the seven and a half. Chip likes Tennessee, OSU, and the under at 131. And the best wager to win, win the Midwest, both gentlemen liking the Illini, plus 125. All right, with that, let's go south and look at that region. They get the whole day started with Florida taking on number 10, Virginia Tech at 12.15 p.m. Eastern time. Gators, the last team to win consecutive national titles. The Hokies have ACC Coach of the Year Mike Young. Uh, they start the day and end the day as well. The final game here Friday is between Villanova and Winthrop. Lots of brackets picking Nova to go out early. They haven't won a game since starting point guard Colin Gillespie went down for the season with the torn MCL at the beginning of this month. Okay, gentlemen, let's talk favorites to cover in the South. Baylor favored by 26 points in their game. Ohio State at 16 points. Again, more reasonable for the three, four, five seeds when you're looking at the numbers. Chip, who's the top favorite to cover in the opening games here in the South for you? The last time we had it for you. 
The last time we had an NCAA tournament, Chris Beard coached Texas Tech all the way to the national championship game. I'm not expecting the Red Raiders to be able to do this, but boy, I'm excited to see tournament Chris Beard, and I am V excited to see Mac McClung in the NCAA tournament. I mean, I just think that he's going to provide us either a buzzer beater or a ridiculous individual performance. And I don't think it starts against Utah State, an excellent defensive team. Uh, Nemish Keita. <laughs> Uh, one of the best defensive players in the entire country, but I do think that they cover the spread. This is too little of a number for a Texas Tech team that I think is going to come in really focused. They were inconsistent throughout the season, but Utah State does not have offensive options quite like Mac McClung, and that's why I'm going to take the Red Raiders as my top favorite to cover. Chip, we got unity here because that's where I'm going. Chris Beard has not lost in the first round of the NCAA tournament. They get a Utah State team that really took advantage of the weak bottom half of the Mountain West and away from home, Utah State, not a very good team. I'm going to lay the points with the Red Raiders as well. All right, let's talk money line. Who's the top money line dog for the South's openers, Larry? Well, I'm going to give you a big one, uh, and it's Oral Roberts uh, getting 16 Ooh. points. I believe money line. Plus 1,100. I would prefer to take it in the first half, plus 475 against Ohio State. This team is absolutely loaded offensively. Top 10 in three-point shooting, number two in free throw shooting. They have a guard, Max Asmus, who is one of the top guards in the country, averaging over 24 points a game. He's a 50-40-90 guy. He shoots almost 50% from the field 43 from deep and 90 percent from the line they're just loaded and ohio state is not going to slow them down ohio state is an offensive team as well i think they're going to get to play the style they want and i would not be shocked if they have the lead at halftime i know it's trendy i know it feels like i'm just jumping on with everybody else but i i think winthrop's going to beat villanova I, I think that this eagles team that coached by pat kelsey which has lost just once by single digits all season, I think that they're going to cause some problems. They play at a ridiculous breakneck pace. They run, uh, I mean, line change substitutions. Four or five guys coming in and out for each other to keep everyone's legs fresh. Now Villanova plays slow, and the one team that beat them this year, UNC Asheville, did so by trying to control the tempo. But if Villanova gets sucked into playing Winthrop's game, Winthrop's going to win uh, because Villanova has not been great without Colin Gillespie on the floor, and Winthrop is playing with a lot of confidence thanks to all that success. So I will take Winthrop to be able to uh, knock off Villanova. Yeah, you want to be playing your best basketball in the month of March. Winthrop certainly doing that. Uh, there are some big spreads, as we mentioned, some big over under numbers in these opening round games as well. Colgate and Arkansas topping out at 161. Larry Oral Roberts at Ohio State was at 157. So when you look at the whole picture, what's your best wager for the South region on Friday, Chip? I'm going to go with North Carolina, lay in the short number against Wisconsin. Mm. This is one of the, the best games, really, in the entire first round. And, and here's my angle here. And this is really mean from the selection committee. <laughs> Wisconsin is awful in Mackey Arena. And this game, they, they had options. They could have put them in Baker's Life. They could have put them in Lucas Oil Fieldhouse. They could have put them in Hinkle. But where are they sending the Badgers? That's right, Mackey Arena. So this house of horrors for the Badgers now becomes the setting for a Wisconsin team that already had trouble defending the best bigs in the Big Ten. And while North Carolina doesn't have uh, any big that I would put in the same conversation uh, as a Luca Garza, as a Kofi Coburn, as a Travion Williams from Purdue, they do have like three or four bigs that just cycle in and out after each other with Armando Baycott, Garrison Brooks, Dayron Sharp, and even Walker Kessler, who came on later in the season. I don't think Wisconsin's ready for the size. I don't think Wisconsin wants to play in this building, and I think North Carolina wins this game. Well, I'm going to go back to Oral Roberts and that 16-point spread with Ohio State. You know, Kyle Young's status is unclear. Two concussions in the last month or so. I don't expect him to suit up for this game. He's a big key to the Buckeyes who just come off a grueling Big Ten tournament. I think Oral Roberts is going to shock some people and make this a competitive game. Okay, so Larry's on Oral Roberts and Liberty. Okay, we've got that settled. Uh, looking at pathways again, Texas Tech, the 2019 finalist in Ohio State, will likely have to face off. Baylor's pathway looks, I mean, pretty decent. Larry, best wager to win the South. 
Yeah, Baylor has got to be it for me. I think they're getting back to the form they had before that long COVID pause, and then they came out and they were all discombobulated. I think we're starting to see that form, but it's really about the region. Ohio State is the number two, Arkansas, Purdue. Just not a lot of contenders in my mind. Baylor makes it to the final four. Let's get frisky. I got Purdue getting out of the South. Uh, This is a team that got better throughout the year. They had freshmen that are major contributors. And as they got more comfortable, uh, the Boilermakers were playing some of their best basketball near the end of the season. If Baylor gets tripped up, I think that Purdue could beat a rematch with Ohio State. They went to overtime in the conference tournament. So Boiler up, I've got Purdue in the Final Four. Chip Patterson taking a beat from the Tim Doyle School of Picking, getting a little weird. Uh, good stuff, gentlemen. As always, uh, let's recap your picks uh, for the South then. Of course, the top favorite to cover in the first round, Texas Tech. They both like them at the at the number there. Four. Top money line underdog, Chip's going with Winthrop. He likes him at the plus 220, best wager for the first round. North Carolina, he likes that thin number there at the one and a half. But Larry likes Earl Roberts at plus 16, and then the best wager to win the South. Chip getting a little weird with Purdue at plus 850, where Larry likes Baylor at plus 160. Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.